Welcome back. I'm going to quickly whip through a few things I've got recently. And on the topic of whips, let's start off with literally whips. This is uh, called a whip because I guess it's sort of a thin whippy thing. Ouch! And um, yeah, that's got, it's got an SMA connector on the end and sort of screws onto your wireless like it's um, on the end of your SR receiver or, or your Little Sonics SMV transmitters. Um, and so you can tell from the blue tip here, this is uh, block 26. That sort of length is designed to work best for block 26 frequencies. And um, yeah, that's pretty normal for what a whip is. Now, what I've got is these. They are the same, except, look at this, it's got a little hinge. And that hinge there, and just allow it to bend. So, also, if you look here at that hinge point, uh, not, not so above the hinge point where the antenna connects, it's much better like reinforced and it's much stronger, I feel, than this. So it's good to A, have spare replacements, but also I think this is in a way an upgrade. Um, and since it's stronger, but also the fact that you can tilt it and put it at right angles like this. Imagine if you've got a, a, a transmitter that you've got one of these, and for whatever reason, you need to mount it sideways, but you're putting into one of those sort of side pouches that work with um, waistbands. Well, it's not good to have your antenna at right angles to your receiver's antenna because uh, of polarization. So now you can flip it up, excuse me. Now you can flip it up and make it match the antenna receiver on your back. Also, another reason. I quite like to have these on my antenna receivers, on my SRs, on my bag, is that when I'm done for the day, rather than unscrewing the antennas and spending that time sort of unscrewing it and then tucking away into a pocket or somewhere that might get lost, I can just simply fold it down like this and fold down the other one. And that allows me to sort of close up the, the waterproof top over my bag and transport my bag much better and easier without worrying about the fact that I may be going to be either bending my receiver antennas or needing to take them off each time. So I really like it when I've got this on my on my receivers. Um, so yeah, that, that's one thing I just got. I got a whole whole bunch, of, 10 of these actually. A whole bunch of these uh, bendy ones. Yay! So I can upgrade them on my um, Sonics wireless. I've also got here these little skin colored caps. These are like the caps for on the DPA um, 4061 Leviers because I picked up some really cheap second hand but they were without the caps so now I've got these to put on. Um, I've also got some of the um, connections for the Sonics just so I can rewire them whilst on the topic of wireless, I saw this that I thought was a pretty cool idea being used by another sound mixer. He was basically storing up, well this is not a lab, but just imagine this is all the cable for it. Rather than sort of loosely lying around in your box or your bag, he was storing them inside these little bags. I thought that's a nice way to sort of individually keep each looked after by, by themselves. So these are actually just for little purses, like miniature purchases to like store your coins in and stuff. But they sort of apparently work out pretty well for storing your labs in. And they have this really strong metal band that just sort of flips closed tight shut like this and then you just pop it open like this and you can grab stuff. And, um, and yeah, so that's that. You probably also store other little small accessories or yeah, and little small things. And yeah, so they're really cheap to get, and I just got a whole bunch of them, one for each. And I also got a few of these um, 3.5 to quarter inch adapters, because again, they're like a buck each. And I've got recently a headphone splitter, so it just allows me to uh, put these in and just change it from the quarter inch to eight inch. Um, I just got myself, I saw it like a too good price to not try it, one of the Audio Technica. What is it? AT453B. 
So when you're looking around for recommendations for your first like entry level professional hypercardioid, Octava, AKG Blue Line, and Audix, oh, this one. These, and of course Audio Technica, these, those four, five, what did I say? Um, those four or five microphones are the most common like entry level ones. And I've got all of them except for this one. So I thought, huh, the price is too good. I thought I might as well. And I'm, I'm pretty happy with these. Actually, I really like the AKG um, CK63, which I guess the next step up. So that's what I normally use. Either that or my Sankin CS1 ear if I think it's short, very short shotgun. It's going to go okay indoors. Um, but yeah, I thought, man, I thought this was a good price on it. I thought, well, now I've got the complete set and I'm able to compare all of them against each other, and when I'm sort of recommending people which, which entry level one to get, I've always at least have some first hand experience about it. So, yeah, now I just don't, I've got a complete set of all the different kinds of entry level hypercardioids. Um, so, yeah, that came in a nice little box here, and one of those sort of mic stand clips, that, no, not a shock mount, yeah, whatever. Um, I don't know. Don't know why this Audix came with that. Oh yeah, there'll be the adapter for the mic. But anyway, um, two last things to show. While I put that away quickly, now these Phonex. So when you're doing playback, now when what you want to do playback on set, maybe you're wanting some not visual clues but auditory clues, cues for the actors to act off. You know, maybe there's lightning and they need to act shocked to the lightning um, or, or a door creaking. And you want, and maybe for whatever reason, the director actually wants that played on set um, for them to all get the timing to react to at the same point in time. Um, and also, you know, hearing stuff could perhaps improve acting performance. Or maybe you're doing some kind of musical and they need to all dance in time to the music. But they're also wanting to... Um, deliver lines at the same time around this point in time. And you, don't, you don't want these other sounds to be messing up with the dialogue that you're trying to record because then in post-production you're locked together. The, the ratio of them and the quality of each, you, you, can't, you can't pull this stuff apart once it's recorded together like that. Um, and yeah, so, so, so what do you do? You can't play it over speakers. So basically, or oh, another, another usage of playback is sometimes actors might get lines fed to them if they're unable to memorize them or the whatever, or they're, or they're so high powered and important they can demand whatever they like. Um, like Johnny Depp apparently brings along his own playback operator for, just for him. Um, to every movie he does. Now apparently he just gets like music played to him to put him in the mood or something like that. But honestly, only him and his playback operator really knows what's being <laughs> played. Or maybe he's being fair lines. Who knows? Uh, apparently, like uh, Mando, what's his name? Whatever, another famous actor. He did get it. Spared him. Anyway, the solution here is a miniature receiver that's so small it hides inside your ear canal, so it is not visible to camera. And also, unless I crank it up really loud, it's not going to be heard by your mics either. So you're going to get perfectly pristine, clean audio recorded, um, and they'll still hear what they need to hear. So here you go. This thing is so small, it will fit inside your ear canal, in there, and nobody will hear it. I mean, for somebody like me, for instance, Maybe my hair is long enough, you could hide just like normal earphones, or you could pull a beanie down or have a hoodie. But, you know, what, what, what if there's nothing covering your ear? You know, what, 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 what if there's nothing to, to be able to run down your neck? You can't hide a cable running down from here or whatever. Well, this here, that's all everything in there. These do, though, work on the principle of induction loops. Um, Anyway, the, the brand they are is Phonics, which is basically the number one brand for this purpose. They're mainly a hearing aid manufacturer. That is what the bulk of their business is. But they're also the biggest name in terms of providing sort of in-ear receivers for the film industry or, or anything else that needs like completely hidden, you know, like so, some, some t t television news presenters might use Phonics. 
Um, but you know, you very often do see the IFB that they're using. Um, so obviously some news productions don't care about hiding it completely. But if you're working in the narrative world, you know, you're making a fictional scripted film, yes, you, you need to hide it completely. Just hide it down the inside the air canal. So, now this little, you know, probably can't be seen on, on this wide angle, but there's, oh, you can just see it. So you can see up there, there's that little wire thing coming up. That little wire thing is not actually an antenna. That's just simply a bit of fishing, fishing line with this little nub on the end. And that allows you to be able to have something, be able to reach in and grab it. Because otherwise, once it's down that deep inside your air canal, you've got no chance of being able to pull this out of your eel. Um, and so, but of course, just being a little invisible fishing line, that little bit that's sticking out, it doesn't stick out past your ear though, it still is like inside the ear. And if, if by some odd chance that angle of the camera is really close or just looking in exactly, it's not going to notice a little bit of fishing, fishing wire. Um, now the batteries it runs on are these little, so like you can see here, but it's actually not that size. It's, it, that's, if you look on the inside, it's, it's, it's like a little small, oh yeah, here we go, we can take one out. That's just to hold it with. That's actually the size of the battery. It is super, super, super tiny. Just that little small speck up there. Um, so yeah, you can replace the battery on it and it does sort of suck through the batteries fairly quickly. So if you are ever on a job where you're using Phonex, you really kind of want to have an assistant to help manage the extra hassle that they will be giving to you. Um, they also in here, if you see at the very end of this, see that little green dot that we deepest into the ear? That's actually a filter because people's ears are not necessarily the cleanest spot. So you will, uh, you will clean this, but you also will replace the filter with, with a new one. Um, and comes with a little mirror, I guess, so you can sort of see how well it's gone. And it's got little earbuds to clean stuff up. And um, yeah, I've got two of these. Da -da. Um, the, why did I get this? Uh, I guess I was going to be doing a feature film later this year that was going to involve a lot of playback. There, were, there was just one of many, let's say, technically challenging aspects of it that I, was sort of, I spent the first lockdown season here in New Zealand. I spent a good chunk of that sort of just doing pre-production research and thinking about how am I going to, A, how's the best way to do this film and also what's the cheapest way to do it because some of these solutions could be a bit expensive, especially like the Phonic Rogers which are the, the newest versions of these. Um, what's also the cheapest way to do this? Obviously the cheapest way would be just earbuds and just telling them to just wear with a hoodie up. But also what's like the optimal point between best and cheapest. And anyway, this was just one of quite a few different problems I had to think about and solve for, for this film. But anyway, once I'd done all that thought about playback and, and, and done it, even though the film wasn't going ahead, you know, I thought maybe, maybe I might want to specialise a little bit in being a playback operator anyway. Because it sounded interesting, I don't think... There really is, there's nobody in New Zealand who specialises into doing this full time. I mean, the niche is too small to make it be a full time specialty. But I thought it could be a good additional um, skill to like focus on. And so yeah, I'm going to try to, try to do more playback. Um, just, just get, I understand playback and, and get some experience doing playback and just be the best possible playback operator as well as my main focus of being a production sound mixer. So yeah, if you're doing a production here in Auckland, anytime soon, get in touch and uh, let me be a great playback operator for you. I mean, I'm even thinking like, maybe I'll even just like start out doing like a few music videos playback for them. I mean for them, they honestly just have the directors and a little Bluetooth speaker and just hope they remember to charge it and the director or maybe a PA does, does uh, playback for that. But obviously I would do playback a bit differently. A, I'll bring along like an 800, 800 watt speaker to really give you as much power as, as you like for the worm to play back with. But also, you know, I'd, I'd have cues set up inside Pro Tools and, and I'd have a time code script track so I could also send a time code to the cameras so that 
the playback of it would sync up exactly with 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 the camera for the, for the song at that moment and yeah there's lots of little things i think you could really like step up playback even for music video syncs ever but of course music videos are not a, a viable career path for playback because i see it mostly they just would have a, a pa just doing playback or something for a typical music video but i thought it could be a good way to get practice started and um and then use that as a basis to maybe start doing playback and narrative productions. Um, yeah, it's just a way to like get the workflow now down exactly right and so forth. Um, yeah, but obviously with music videos, that's not something you'd use this for because, hey, you're not recording dialogue. But for all the other, era, other types of parts of playback. Um, anyway, oh, one last thing, one last thing. So, I have a Santa Vices 833, which you can have... Um, Sound devices, was it called SD Remote? Um, an app running on it is an app that came out for Android. Now, I, I got the very first Sound devices 833 in New Zealand, and when the support for the tablet came out, it was only for Android. And I, I have an iPad. I got this iPad because of my Zoom F series, which only has it for Apple iOS. But I thought, surely they will bring out support for Apple, just like they've done with all the other products. Sound devices will do this. So I thought, rather than buying a whole new tablet, when I really have got a perfectly great tablet, let's just wait. And eventually, a few months later, yes, they confirmed that we are going to be bringing out support for Apple. So I was like, fantastic, I'm right. I'm just going to keep on waiting. I'm not going to rush out and buy a tablet that I don't really need, do I? I mean, I buy so much stuff I don't really need to really, but... You know, I try to pretend to show some degree of self-control sometimes. Um, so yeah, here I am showing great self-control self going, I'm not going to buy another tablet that I do not need. I'm just going to stick with my great tablet I've had here for the last few years. And that will go with my Sony Vices 833. As soon as I bring out support for it. And um, yeah, they do eventually, some months later after that. But it's only for iOS 13.0 or more recent. This... <laughs> can't be updated to 13.0. It's like, oh, it's only for the newer one. So now I have to buy a new tablet. I'm either buying like another Apple product. Um, I'm not necessarily a fan of Apple. I mean, I only bought this iPad because it was the only choice for the Zoom series. Um, or I could buy a, um, an Android. And now, so, Sound Advisor's SD Remote should work with any Android that has the newest operating system to be able to cope with running with it. But they also have a very short list of officially supported ones with sound devices. So I happened to find secondhand somebody selling one that is on the officially supported list. So I thought, you know, why not go for the officially supported? But this is a really good part. He was selling it with this as well. So I bought this as a combo pair for only slightly more than what this would be normally secondhand. So I got this for not much extra cost. So I thought, why not? Um, now what this is, this is called the Sound Guy Solutions TM1. Sound Guy Solutions is a very niche little company that makes products just specifically for our needs and location world for TV film people. Um, one of the other things I've made is a lav bullet, which is very popular. So they're the guys behind that, for instance. Um, and or also the drop mic because the lav, lav bullet gets looked at suspiciously by TAS when you're going through the airport sometimes. So they <laughs> built basically the same thing, but it's called the drop mic instead. So that was a funny pun. Um, anyway, so the idea of what this is, is that the, the Sennheiser Team 1, that slots down into a slot on your mixing bag. And then, so, because the thing is, when you, especially when you're trying to do the whole department's job, for sound just by yourself, your hands are full with your boom up in the air, you've got this bag around you and, and, and like how do you, you're not an octopus, how am I meant to manage doing this, even looking at this, you know, and holding it while I'm doing everything else. That's where this comes in, it slots in here and he's already done this, he's already attached the velcro on the back and he attached velcro on this, so you just slap that velcro on here and da da, look, perfect, I can just see it. In fact, especially with me with my beard, I always tuck my beard into the side of my harness so I can actually look down and see my screen 
on my 833. But that screen is so small, it's about that size. It's just like an inch, a couple of inches across. It's, this is much nicer and it's also in front of me, not, not underneath my bed, I need to tuck out each way. Um, so yeah, this is a nice, nice big screen. Beautiful. Um, and just perfectly popped up to here. Now, back when I was thinking about maybe buying the sound, the Soundguide Solutions TM1 brand new, there's like pretty much no information about it online. And I was really wondering, like it looks like it's made out of metal. And I must say, I'm very happy when it actually arrived to discover it is plastic. It kind of looks a bit metalish, but now it's completely plastic. Because obviously I've got my wireless receivers here. I don't want any metal getting in the way of the antennas and possibly acting as, as a barrier for reception. So that was, that was fantastic news to see. It's actually made out of plastic. Aside from, of course, these little screws here for the hinge and this magnet up here. So the purpose of that is that you can take your um, uh, tablet here and you'll be looking at it Then you could bring up time code and you could point that at the camera and they could point the camera at your tablet and they could record what that moment in, 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 moment in time is and get exact time code for the editor to sync up with. Now I personally have never really seen a need for that but I imagine there's some people who do find that to be a popular usage. So I mean I personally would probably rather just ditch the magnets and just and ditch the hinge and just make this be lighter and stronger. But hey, it's got that feature. But as I was saying, there must be some people that, that, that like it because the Zaxcom Nomad and, and Zaxcom Max, because I've got the Zaxcom Max myself, it actually has the option to bring up time code to fully fold the screen and only show time code on the little screen. And it shows it upside down as well. So when you tilt your bag forwards, it's right side up for the camera to see. I'm just like, it's a very curious feature. But the fact that this has that feature and the Zaxcoms have that feature, I guess there, there is a need for it. I mean, I'm just like, why not use a proper slate? Um, but again, that's another person and cost and stuff that people have to carry around. Um, oh yeah, came with the cable too. So we do have, you can be done wirelessly, but you can hardwire it if you just want to be extra certain about everything working as it should. So this will plug in here and this will go into the USB slot on the Sound Devices 8 series. Now, what I quite like about the 8 series is I've actually got even an little antenna on the side that you can screw into it and that will just should give even greater range for when you're walking about with this. So I'm almost thinking, I've seen like first ADs and and, other, and, and wardrobe people and other kind of people who need iPads for their work on set. They might store the iPads in this vest that they wear, you know, this sort of lot vests that lots of crew people so sort of store stuff. Well, there are some vests that store an iPad and will fold out and will sit like this. I'm almost thinking about getting one of those vests so I could have the iPad wirelessly with the extra range that um, the antenna will have on the 8 series and have a wireless boom wireless headphones, especially if I get like some really good wireless um, IEM, so not like the normal ones I just give out, it's good enough for directors and producers and clients and so forth. If I get some really like dual channel, you know, like stereo ones, something like, going back to talking about Shure, so what did in the previous video, something like the Shure PSM, well not 1000s because I think they again are only AC, AC powered but then just the next step down, which is basically almost almost as good, same audio quality, the um, PSM 900s that do have a half rack, um, half rack DC powered option. So there's a really really high quality audio, and it's dual stereo. So you know, so it, it's a stereo. So I, I've actually got options to like listen to Berman one, less than other. That might be a way to sort of have the sound cut, but still burn myself and now I have free room and still be able to look down so be able to monitor stuff in both ears really effectively and have this the 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 the, the, the tablet to, to visually monitor everything that's going on. I'm really thinking about sort of building up this setup and in my mind it sounds really awesome at least the potential. But anyway for when you are going to be wearing the bag and you want your tablet on it, this, this is perfect. I'm going to be using it this weekend on a film I'm working on. So, good times ahead. And uh, yeah, let's wrap that up and I'll come back in the future and tell you about how this worked out. 
and everything else. And any questions, ask them below and uh, let's start get talking. See ya.